Hello and welcome back to Scale JDM Reviews. And on the bench today you can see that we have the K-Brake Toyota Celsius UCF30 series from 2003. This is another Aoshima kit. It's not what I would class as rare, but I'm an absolute massive fan of K-Brake and uh, I just had to do this one. Now the reason for choosing this particular kit is based on my previous video with the Luxi Aristo. Now that particular kit had uh, a very certain type of suspension with swivel joints on it which allowed the car to be positioned uh, almost as if it had hydraulics um, in the real life version. Uh, these kits are very slightly different, the chassis is slightly more complex to set up, it does employ springs and screws uh, and a very well thought out chassis by Aoshima. Um, it is adjustable whenever you need it to be, you can have it as high up or as low down as you need with camber or without camber. Saying that these kits can be made with permanent camber or you can do it with just a very slight amount of camber using the screws. Right, so without further ado, let's open this box, shall we? And there we have it. The kit is moulded in white and it is still bagged, so with the magic of film and television, we shall make the bags disappear. And bam, there you are. Oh, I just love magic. So let's delve in, shall we? Well, the first thing we've got are the decals, which are covered over to keep them nice and safe. So if we just peel that cover off, which is a little bit awkward. There we go. Absolutely stunning set of decals. They've got a black or a silver side decals. Um, you've got the pinstripe and the bonnet stripes as well. Uh, obviously you've got the two K-brake window decals, uh, different number plates, various badges and obviously loads of K-brake um, decals down the bottom here along the side and up the top there. Um, these obviously can be bought, the real life size ones can be bought on the K-brake website. Unfortunately they're linked ship to the UK so I'm out of luck there but it's nice to have some miniature versions. So we'll just put those away somewhere safe. Next up we have this little glass bit here which is caught. These are going to be the side indicator repeater lenses. Um, strangely didn't attach those to the main sprues but possibly because it's an aftermarket bumper and therefore to do that on that glass sprue would mean a complete retooling. So yeah I can understand that. Right the next part we have is the it's part of the body kit here. Uh, what we have here are the uh, the side door panels, um, the body shell itself doesn't actually have any lower body panels so these will be complete replacements. Um, we have the bumper edging here, uh, they can be chrome, they've also got what looks to be bumper sensors in them front and rear which is a nice touch, a very subtle rear spoiler and what looks to be a radio antenna, uh, what they call it, a shark fin antenna, very nice. Next, onto the bumpers. As you can see, uh, very nicely detailed. Uh, I tend to do these uh, these fin bits here. I tend to do those in chrome with the rest of the kit, in whatever body colour I see fit. Um, the back bumper there with the twin exhaust outlets as well. Really nicely detailed, dirty. We've got here in the bag. Uh, we've got the. Uh, the poly caps and a couple of screws. Not too sure why those two screws are there. I'm sure all will become obvious when we get to the instructions. And onto the windows. So there we go. Uh, the car does have a sunroof if you decide you want to cut it out. Uh, obviously we've got the, the masking lines as well for where you need to black out parts of the window screen. Uh, this one seems a bit bent. Let's just straighten up a bit. Uh, we have the sunroof, if you decide to go down that route, the front lenses and we have the indicator lenses here, front and rear and some side indicators down the bottom there. Uh, next up we have the suspension here, uh, we've got the fuel tank, uh, some gorgeous brake discs and calipers there with in very fine detail K-brake written on them, lovely touch. Obviously the spindles, you've got your steering arm, front steering components there and we've also got the, the rear 
suspension components. Now these two slot together and these using swivel joints attached just in there and that will give you your kind of up and down keeping the, the whole of the suspension here will be solid on the car, they'll be screwed in but this will be freely to move up and down with the springs and of course we've got the uh, the front valance there. Okay, on to the next chassis sprue. We've got here the front suspension setup with the upper and lower wishbones. Uh, these will be screwed into place and they will be controlled in height by springs and another set of screws. We've got the chassis attachment member there and we've got slightly longer spindles that you can see here. Now these will attach to the other brake discs that come with this kit as you can see in the background just there. They're slightly deeper so the spindles need to be a bit longer. Those are used if you want the car to be permanently slammed and uh, you don't want to go through the, the normal spring and screw method. What you've got here is you've got these two which slot into place on the rear suspension and they will stop the rear of the car getting too much camber. Now as I said previously we have these second set of uh, discs which still look absolutely fantastic. Now these are slightly deeper as you can see and you would use this car if you were going to keep it in a permanently slammed uh, stance the steering components and the spaces and everything will help you achieve that. Now personally I'm not a massive fan of the of massive camber um, I do like the cars to be low I do like to have a slight bit of camber um, I think it just looks a little bit more natural obviously the Japanese are crazy they love their massive massive camber on their VIP machines or anything they can get their hands on to be fair and because they're absolutely crazy they, they're forgiven for it. Um, with this kit having two sets of brake discs and suspension setup you can actually use those particular brake discs on another kit if you wish. Um, I personally choose to go with the adjustable method which is how this kit will be built. Okay, there we go. So we have the rear exhaust pieces, um, some resonators there and the two back boxes with the tips just there and we have a grill this is the alternative grill this is the k-brake version of the grill which will we will be using when we build this particular kit and I'm not too sure if we're going to do that body colored or not but it, uh, it does look does look really nice second set of chrome goodness we have right here so we've got the original grill which we'll not be using we have some wing mirror inserts the original exhaust tips just there. We also have the front light assemblies. Now you're in the clear parts there will be some almost uh, what would be replicating uh, projector lights which go into those two holes there. Got the rear light assembly which can be painted up as necessary. We've also got this uh, long silver thing which will go along the back of the car just above the number plate. And also you've got the, the door handles just there. Next up we have the rear lights, they are moulded in clear red as you can see. Uh, the gaps are for a couple of corner bits that are on the clear sprue and once they're on the silver backing which we saw on the on the last chrome piece um, they do look pretty damn good. Right next onto the interior which we have just here, moulded in beige, uh, you can see all the details. We have a, a right hand drive uh, dashboard here, navigation in the middle, uh, loads of switches and buttons can be nicely detailed up. We also have the windscreen wipers and the gear stick gator just there where the automatic transmission would go. That was flap on the left hand side would be for cup holders. Now we'll come back to this bit in a few seconds but we'll take out the rest of the interior. There we go. So again like the Aristo it's got a leather simulated interior which looks fantastic. The doors can be detailed up really really nicely. Uh, we've got a standard Toyota steering wheel there, the automatic transmission shift, the rear view mirror, steering console and the front seats uh, with their backing plates. Again if you can do some kind of almost stitching with uh, with a sharpie uh, it would just bring them out really nice kind of a, a pinstripe effect would be fantastic on those. So before we go any further I'm going to straighten the box out. We've got this little bit here which we have seen on other kits before. Now this is sandpaper and what this is for is when you take the body kit we'll come to this again in a second this is for sanding the inside of those wheel arches now what that'll do 
as you can see, we have, if you can see on the camera very well, we've got a good half mil worth of plastic there. Now, if you can make that hairline thin, the tyres and the wheels will sit just perfect. And it gives it such a fantastic look. They'll sit in there snug. Uh, they'll still be able to move when it's on, when it's fully slammed. Um, and that's the whole point of them putting it in there for you. Just to give you a helping hand. Right, next up, we're just going to quickly do this bit first. We have the side wing mirrors. Uh, what looks to be an aerial, even though we have the, the shark fin and the number plate. All right, now onto the body shell, which is most people's favourite part. And as you can see, we have no lower body on here. So this would be uh, where you put the side skirts. Uh, it's probably best to make this body shell all in one go and then paint it. Uh, so that would mean the side skirts front and back, maybe the spoiler if you want to use it, and obviously cut out the summary if you need it. The lines are there, just get yourself a, a really nice exacto blade and you'll be well away. Um, the S4, S4 moulding lines, there's one just here, again, the normal Aoshima path, straight up the, the bonnet grease, up the top of the roof, straight along so it's barely visible, and then down the back where it just comes into the bumper, just there, just if you can see that, just there. But yeah, lovely detailed, a lovely detailed mould there. Um, Aoshima do a couple of Celsius bodies, they're not all like this, some of them are fully made. Um, but for this k one, well, I think they did new tooling on the basis they could use it for various body kits in the future just to swap the side bits. Well, I'm just going to get onto the chassis, it's going to tip those bits away. Um, this is a very typical Kiwami chassis. It obviously is slightly different for the Aristo version and, uh, and for the crown itself. Um, but for this one, they, they all seem to look very similar underneath. It's got the same sort of engine same exhaust pipes and stuff and you can see where you use your screws there and there and there and there um, other than that they do look pretty good when they're when they're finished up obviously for extra low lows if you want to do that you can cut away or sand away these arches because there is no engine detail you're not going to have any gaping holes or anything next up we have the springs and the screws uh, now you do get uh, a couple more springs, as far as I remember, extra just in case you tend to lose them. You know, as, as most people know, when you drop uh, anything on the floor in your model room, it will vanish into nothingness and it will end up somewhere far, far away that you'll never see it again. Um, hence, you've got a couple of spares in there. There are enough screws for the entire kit. I'm still curious as to why there were two other screws with the poly caps. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll figure that out in a moment. Right, onto people's favourite bit, which is these stunning wheels. Uh, these are K-brake wheels. They are hybrid 5-star and apparently 20 inch. And I've had my grubby fingerprints all over them, hence why they're not looking so fantastic now. Um, beautiful set of wheels uh, and stunning chrome. I do have uh, another K-brake that I've built, and I actually did the inside of these in a kind of um, a metallic black colour and it stood out beautifully. Uh, the other thing with this kit, it has the low profile tyres like I told you, but these, as you can see, are angled. So that when the car is sat on its angle like that, when it's sat on a, on a camber, it sits flush with the road still. And that will help keep the car low to the ground. Um, if you compare it to a standard tyre, which I don't actually have to hand so far, um, if you had another tyre, it would probably sit a couple of mil higher on the basis if you've got a tyre that's the same thickness all the way through, obviously it's going to sit higher unless you sand it down. K-Brake have taken this away from us and they can see that we can have it beautifully cambered and still looking really nice and low. And these tyres are fantastic. I really do hope they start selling these tyres separately because uh, I think I'd have to stock up on them. So I'm just going to move these wheels out of the way. And we'll go to the instructions. Okay, let's dive into this bad boy. So, the first thing you see is we have the the Celsius overview. Uh, the car is running a little bit of camber, and it looks beautiful. Uh, it is a very good representation of what the car will look like when it's finished, depending on which suspension setup you choose. Right, this next part is extremely important. 
because of course we all read the instructions before we carry on with the build and the difference here is we have two different suspension sets up A and B now A is if you want the car to be completely cambered constantly there's no adjustment at all it just sits flat on the deck and it looks fantastic B however is adjustable fully adjustable and we will go through that in two seconds well, as you can see on the A section we use the thicker uh, brakes uh, we put it all together as normal and it's attached to the body with screws with some spacers now that keeps it from I mean if you take the spacers off it probably won't fit properly on the chassis but you could get technically extra low lows if you didn't use them I always have it goes way, it goes far far low enough than I could ever want it to go um, but with the wishbone suspension and everything it does look it still looks nice it still keeps that nice camber and uh, it looks fantastic when built up second part obviously the rear suspension is made in quite the same way we have the rear subframes going together and with the thicker brake discs as normal and you can see again screws and space is attached then you put your exhaust pipe and everything on and suddenly you've got a, a slam chassis however if you do prefer a little bit more of a customization when you're building your car suspension choose the b method uh, this is using the slightly thinner brake discs we then have to build the suspension in the same way with all the spaces and the i guess the the plastic circlips we've got springs and screws which are now employed and this will adjust the height of each individual wheel on each on both subframes and also the subframes themselves as you can see do have springs and screws as well so you can adjust the entire subframe in one go and you have to be very very uh, you have to be very anal with this you have to make sure it is level and then once you've done that you set up your physical wheels itself so otherwise the whole car could look completely unbalanced however you could get some real kind of three wheeled action if you set it up in a particular way if you wanted to do that um, it still looks good it was great slammed with the screw method though it um, you find that you have less camber on the wheels you can screw them right up which will bring the camber in and it will almost be like the a method but you still have the adjustability there however i have it so it's just got a slight slight uh, adjustment but it's sitting really nice tucked up against the inside of the arches there and in order to do that you need to use the a method uh, so you have to use the b method so what we'll do is we'll, we'll flip this over just like that and what i've just knocked off there um okay so we'll start on this one here so we're finishing off the rear suspension as you can see the fuel tank the exhaust pipes and stuff however we do have those little black pieces that i told you if you plug those into the suspension on the rear it will lock them from going any lower and if if you do want that it will uh, it will give you a nice kind of rear high low front uh, look uh, i don't use them myself i don't really see the point but uh, it's there if you if you do like that it also stops the camber on the rear tires as well um, after that we have the interior which is nicely detailed it can be painted however you like it very simple interior to put back together so swiftly moving on we have the windows so obviously you'd have to it's telling you here to paint the interior of the car that color and and then you you mask off your windows you spray them you put them in and then you've got uh, a nice uh, kind of roof line color as well um front and rear lights uh, very simple but very effective once on the car and then you have all the body parts and all the lights and all the bumper attachments and stuff and this is obviously when you go into detail on these bits this is where the car pops so if you can get this right you know it, it will look fantastic uh, i have tried it the, some of the parts are a bit dinky for my hands but you know they can still look fantastic mounting the body completed to the rest of the chassis with the interior sections and that is the kit ended of course what we'll do is we'll move across here and we'll look at the sprue parts uh, not too many spare parts left over off this car you have the original grill you have the number plate and the original aerial and the original chrome exhaust tips which we don't need because on the other chrome bits they're there now obviously you've got these here it's saying that you don't need them uh, these brake discs on here with these spindles you do if you want to make the other version of the suspension and other than that yeah, I have built one of these kits already. It does look fantastic. Oh, it was a very good kit to make, and I did enjoy it.
So of course, I'm looking forward to building this one with Ernst. I'm going to try and do a bit of customization to it, but I will do a full video once I start the build. Okay, so I really do hope you've enjoyed this overview of the uh, the Cable Excelsior. Um, this kit is readily available. It's not a rare kit. Um, so for anyone that was kind of pondering if they were going to build it, it is a fantastic looking model when it's built. So I definitely recommend you go out and get it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down for anything else you'd like to see. Uh, any questions you may have, I'll be more than happy to answer. And, uh, and have a great day.